Okay, so now that we have Mirth Connect running and we have our IP address for this machine, we can now do the setup for Mirth itself. All right, so what I have here is my Windows computer and I'm going to go ahead and go to my web browser. And what you need to do first is download Java. And your computer may or may not already have Java installed, but I'm gonna assume that it doesn't. So just going to uh, Oracle's or Java's website, uh, you want to just agree and download. And once it's downloaded, we go ahead and run it. And just do a basic install. Okay, now that Java is installed, we can go ahead and close out of this. And in our web browser at the address bar, we want to type in the IP address of our Mirth server. So 16.40.244, which is the address of my server, and colon 8080. And you'll see this page come up, and we're currently talking to our virtual machine that we set up earlier. So we want to go ahead and launch Mirth Connect Administrator. This will download this web start file. Go ahead and save it. And then go ahead and run it. We can close out of Firefox now, or your web browser, whichever ha what happens to be. And it will start loading the Mirth Connect software on Windows. Now for this, we just want to go ahead and just run it. You can select uh, Trust if you want to. Um, for this, I'm going to do that just so it doesn't keep popping up. Do it to the other one as well. And now it will start the web app. So now we have the interface to our Mirth Connect server. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in admin as the username and admin as the password, uh, which is the default for Mirth Connect. Click login. Okay, so now you have this window that comes up and you'll have this uh, first startup window. This lets you change the password for the admin account, uh, which is a good idea if you are planning to put this into production at some point, but uh, because this is just an example, I'm just going to leave the password as admin. So the the username will be admin and the password will be admin. So I'm going to deselect register with Mirth and select finish. And you'll see we have a bunch of update stuff. We want to go ahead and close out of that. And here you can see the main page for the Mirth Connect Administrator will be where we'll be doing most of our work. So now that we have Mirth Connect Administrator running, we can go ahead and create the channel that's going to take the HL7 data from the Welsh Allen and convert it to something that the database can read. So what we're going to do first is go up to Channels and then right click in this area and select New Channel. And we're going to call this channel Welsh Allen. And under Source, when we switch to this, we want to select connector type, change it from channel reader to TCP listener. And now down here, here where it says receive timeout, we want to change it from zero to 10,000. So this part is what the Welsh Allen is going to see. It's going to connect to this IP address on this particular port, 6661, and it's going to send its HL7 data to this channel. At that point, we want to set up a destination for that data. In this case, it's going to be the database. So under destinations, we want to change the connector type from channel writer to database writer. Now down here, under driver, we want to uh, select MySQL. What we can do is we can click insert URL template and it will give us a idea of what our string here should look like. 
So under URL, we want to keep the everything that comes before these two backslash or two forward slashes. But we need to change host, port, and DB name to match our database. So we want to change host to localhost since it's talking to itself essentially. And port we want to change to 3306. And then under DB name, we want to change that from DB name to mirth. And then under username, we want to chain, we want to enter in mirth. And then the password for the mirth SQL user, which we set up during the database setup. In this case, I left it as just password. And now we have set up the connection between Mirth Connect and the database. So now underneath this, you see the SQL text box here. This is where we'll enter in the SQL query that Mirth is going to use to insert records into the database. But before we can fill this out, we need to clean up the input a little bit. So if you go up to the tab here called Scripts, click on that and uh, select from this drop-down preprocessor. So there's a small snippet of code you need to replace this with. So I'm going to copy it from our file here, and paste it, select everything in this box, and then right-click Paste to overwrite everything inside of this box. And what this will do is this will strip out some of the characters that give errors um, when this is going to be parsed. So now we can go back to destinations. And now we need to tell Mirth Connect what data we want it to store. So to do that, we go over here to Edit Transformer. And in here, we're going to pick out the individual pieces of the HL7 data we want to store. This process, though, is pretty tedious and prone to errors. So instead, what I suggest doing is importing the saved transformer settings that I've already created. So I'm going to go over here to import transformer and it will be in the pack that you downloaded and open up the transformer.xml file. And this will automatically fill out the data that we need to store. And you can see here in the mapping, this is what it's looking for, is these individual pieces of the XML data. And it's going to extract those and save them for later so we can use that in our database. So now we can go back to channel. And under SQL, this is where we will go ahead and uh, create our query that's going to be used to send data to the database. So now we can start generating our query. Uh, for what I'm going to do is I'm going to click generate or the, uh, the button insert next to generate and click on get tables. What get, ta what get tables will do is it's going to access our database and find everything we've set up before. So it sees that we've made our patient table with our values here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select include on patient, but deselect ID. And you can see over here that we have some of these ones in all uppercase. These are the, are the available fields that are present for our device. So we have last name, first name, patient ID, and then three of the um, vital signs information. So we want to do, what we want to do is just deselect the ones that are not in that list. So the oximetry, the mean, and pulse rate, yeah, so that's what we have. So we click Generate, and you can see our Insert into Patient and then the values that are stored. Now what we gotta do is fairly simple, we just need to match up um, the values in order into this right here. So click on just before the first colon, or uh, the first uh, comma, and it wants the patient ID. So we just go over here and click Patient ID. And we can drag it right into there. 
I'm going to do the next thing for the next one. So we just click right next to the second colon here and it wants to have the last name. So we just click and drag last name right up here. And then the first name, same for that. And the vital signs. And finally the pulse rate. So this is what it should look like. And you can see it just matches what we have over here. And now we can click Save Changes and Validate Connector. You can see that the connector was successfully validated. So now what we want to do is we want to click on Channels back over here and click, just make sure that our, our channel here is selected. And we want to click on Enable Channel. And you should see it switched from disabled to enabled. And now we want to click deploy channel. So now our connector is running. So our Welsh Allen should now be able to talk to the server and send HL7 to it, which will then send it to a database. So now it's running, but before we test it with the actual Welsh Allen, we can test it to make sure it actually is working. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll make sure that we're on the channels page and select our Welsh Allen channel, go down to view messages over here, and then click on send message. And in here what we want to do is copy over the example file that should be included, which should contain this example HL7 message. So on this I'm just going to control A and then control C, copy it, and then go back to our message here and control V paste it. So we just copied the, every, the contents of that file over to here and now we can click process message. You can see you're saying processing message. And if we go back to our dashboard you can see here that we have one received message and one sent message. And if we go to back to our channels, click on the Welsh Allen channel and view messages you can see that it has our message that we sent uh, transformed and then sent. And you can see if you click on the sent line here and go to uh, the, the sent radio button here, you can see that it's built our SQL query and has sent in all the data for it. So now what we can do is we can go back to our Linux server and see if it actually did get it. Okay, so now I'm back here with my Linux server. I'm going to log in as root and then open up MySQL. I can do use mirth to select the mirth database. And now I can do select star from patient, semicolon. And you can see here that we now have one record in our database with the values from the HL7 message we just sent.